So HubSpot helps small and medium-sized businesses market and sell their products. So we provide a software platform that you can do anything from hosting your website to sending emails to writing a blog, kind of building up your reputation online. You've been exploring disruptors to search engine optimization, and, and that's what many organizations currently use to get discovered online. What are some of those disruptors? Yeah, so I think the really fascinating thing right now is we're moving from this time where we just had one way of finding content, i.e. Google search engine, into a space where users and consumers are browsing all sorts of different search engines to find businesses and the information they need. So for example, um, voice search is now becoming more and more prominent. Uh, Comscore thinks that by 2020, there will be about 200 million voice searches a month uh, looking for content, looking for information. So that might be something as simple as Siri, what's the weather going to be like? Exactly, or um, Amazon Alexa has really taken uh, at least in the States, has taken people by storm. And so uh, smarter home devices that will allow you to talk to your home, order things through there, uh, that kind of voice activated search is certainly interesting. Another form of search that's been around for a while but is just starting to get really sophisticated is social search. So Google processes about 3.5 billion searches a day. Facebook, on the other hand, processes 1.5 billion, which is nowhere near Google, but that's much bigger than anyone, I think, really expected. And those searches more and more are not just searches for people, but they're searches for businesses and information, and they've really leaned in this year into prioritizing their search bar and making search better. Let's also look at app search for a moment. The majority of the world is on Android, not iOS, and Android apps are famous for not really talking to each other terribly well. Does that make app search less disruptive, potentially? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, when the, when the internet first came about, there were sort of these directories where you would find information and sites based on categories, right? And that's kind of how app search works today. Uh, whether it be on Android or iOS devices, it's really hard to find the apps that you need and to understand how they can make your life better. There's so many of them and navigating that world is really difficult. Uh, so I think that something has to happen there. I think better app search is coming. And as it comes, I do think that, that organizations and businesses who um, play in that space need to be aware. How do you suggest that companies and, and organizations and charities, for example, that may be budgeting a year ahead, prepare for a world where browser-based search engine optimization is less important? So I think this really comes down to knowing your audience and knowing how they consume content, how they find out about uh, organizations and, and ideas. Uh, there's, we're in a time of rapid change. We probably haven't seen this much change since the onset of social media and the onset of mobile. Uh, and in times of rapid change, it's hard to know where to place your bets, right? So in those situations where you have a limited budget, the best thing you can do is look into your own audience and figure out, are they, are they predominantly mobile or are they desktop? Are they using um, social media to the same extent as, as other people are? And figure out what are the one or two plays that you can afford to do outside of your current playbook uh, to optimize for those. Let's go back to social search just for a moment. What can, again, organizations do to get the best results from social search that they might not be doing already for SEO and Google? So the interesting thing about social search is it's much more about, obviously, the people than it is about the content. So, for example, um, if, you, if you write content on Medium, which is sort of a social publishing site, uh, the content that does well there does well not necessarily because the, the text has strong keywords or there's really strong search engine optimization within the post itself. The content that does well there does well because the person who wrote it or the people who interact with it are prominent somehow. They have a big following of their own. So content on social spreads people to people as opposed to based on the, the meaning or the keywords within the copy. So as part of that, that picture then, understanding how uh, people are found on social and trying to perhaps copy the techniques that are used by some of those organizations? I think it's figuring out who your influencers are. And so if you're an organization and you've got a, a donor base, for example, and I would look into that donor base to figure out who there has a really strong reach. And it may be somebody who is, you know, uh, in their 50s and is very established in their career and has just built a big 
following over years. It may be somebody who's much younger who just somehow has a larger following. Regardless of the demographics, you want to figure out who's actually influential in these spaces and leverage them as your advocates. And last thing, over the next five years, three to five years, let's say, what should be on everyone's radars when it comes to getting found, particularly via mobile? So mobile is important. I think that um, in the last year, mobile has become a search ranking indicator for Google and um, for other uh, search, engine, uh, search engines as well. And so um, I think we are at a time now where you don't need to necessarily drop everything and do this tomorrow, especially if you've got a limited budget, but I do think it is really important to make sure that your site gets optimized for mobile. Um, you can do it very simply in the content management system that it has responsive design. Um, you don't necessarily need to pay a lot of money to get your site optimized, but the next time you go to redo your site and your blog and your content, make sure that you're moving it to a platform that works really well on a range of devices, whether it be a tablet or a mobile or whatever is the next screen size that rolls out.